The respiratory membrane is a blood-air barrier that consists of alveolar and capillary walls along with their fused basement membranes. They are very thin, about 0.5 micrometers thick, which allows gas exchange across the membrane by simple diffusion. Alveolar walls consist of a single layer of squamous epithelium, termed type 1 alveolar cells, through which diffusions of gases occur. The alveolar walls also have scattered cuboidal epithelial cells, or type 2 alveolar cells. These cells secrete surfactant and antimicrobial proteins. This figure shows how the alveoli are in close relationship to capillaries. The alveoli are surrounded by fine elastic fibers and pulmonary capillaries. Alveolar pores connect adjacent alveoli, equalizing air pressure throughout the lung and providing alternate routes in case of blockages. Alveolar macrophages keep the alveolar surfaces sterile. About 2 million dead macrophages are carried by cilia to the throat and swallow each and are swallowed each hour. This figure shows the detailed inside anatomy of the respiratory membrane. Each one of these pockets is an alveolus for gas exchange. Pulmonary capillaries are on the outside and only one layer of squamous epithelium separates the gas from the capillary wall. Type 2 alveolar cells are also found scattered around the alveoli and they secrete surfactant. The close-up figure illustrates the movement of oxygen out of the alveolus across a type 1 cell into the capillary where it is picked up by hemoglobin. And also it illustrates the movement of carbon dioxide out of the capillary across the single layer type 1 alveolar cell into the alveolus. The respiratory membrane includes the alveolar epithelium, the fused basement membranes of the alveolar and capillary endotheliums, and then the capillary endothelium. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are now continuing our study of the respiratory system with the gross anatomy of the lungs. The lungs occupy all the thoracic cavity except for the mediastinum. The root of the lung is the site of vascular and bronchial attachment to the mediastinum. The costal surfaces are the anterior, lateral, and posterior surfaces of the lungs. The lung's apex is the superior tip, deep to the clavicle. The base of the lung is the inferior surface that rests on the diaphragm. The hilum is found on the mediastinal surface and is the site for the entry and exit of blood vessels, bronchi, lymphatic vessels, and nerves. The left lung is separated into the superior and inferior lobes by an oblique fissure. So we see that here. The left lung is smaller than the right because of the heart's position. The cardiac notch is the concavity for the heart to fit in into the left lung. The right lung is separated into superior, middle, and inferior lobes. In the right lung, the superior and middle lobes are separated by a horizontal fissure, and the middle and inferior lobes are separated by an oblique fissure. So we see that here. Here's the horizontal fissure and the oblique fissure. Also, this is the um, diaphragmatic surface, so this lies upon the diaphragm. This is also where the base of the lung is. The apex are at the top here. This is the hilum. Figure 22.11a shows the anatomical relationships of the organs in the thoracic cavity. You can see the rib cage creating the lateral borders of the thoracic cavity where the lungs are just medial to it. So there are the ribs here, lung here, ribs here, lungs here. Also, the diaphragm is the inferior border, and the lungs are just superior to it. The heart lies slightly left of center, and therefore the left lung is slightly smaller, and has a cardiac notch. 
In between the two lungs, we see the thymus at the top of the trachea. When we look more closely at the lateral edge, where there's the magnified portion, we see the lung is covered by the visceral pleural, pleura. So here's the lung, there's the visceral pleura. There is a pleural cavity, and then there is the parietal pleura, covering the inside of the intercostal muscle that is attached to the ribs. This figure shows the medial aspect of the left lung. You see the blood vessels and the bronchus entering the lung at the hilum. The cardiac impression is right here, and the aortic impression right here is where the heart would rest against it. The apex is the superior point, and the inferior and superior lobes are labeled. Okay, so here we have the left superior lobe the oblique fissure, and the left inferior lobe. This figure illustrates the location of the lungs in the thoracic cavity by way of a transverse section viewed from above. The heart lies most anterior, while the lungs curve towards it and fill the cavity. So we have the right lung here and the left lung here. The esophagus is posterior, to the lungs in the medial portion and is anterior to the spine. This figure also shows the visceral and parietal pleuras with the pleura space immediate to them. Each lung is further divided into bronchopulmonary segments. There are 10 on the right lung and 8 to 10 on the left. They are separated by connective tissue septa. Each segment is served by its own artery, vein, and bronchus. If one segment is, a, is diseased, it can be individually removed. The bronchopulmonary segments are further divided into lobules, which are the smallest subdivision visible to the naked eye. Lobules are hexagonal segments served by bronchioles and their branches. Lungs are mostly composed of alveoli, with the rest consisting of stroma, an elastic connective tissue that makes the lungs very elastic and spongy. Figure 22.12 shows the bronchial tree. The right lung has three segments in its superior lobe, whereas the left, lo uh, left superior lobe has four segments. The right middle lobe has two, and the right inferior has five segments, as does the left inferior lobe. Next, we move on to the blood supply and the innervation of the lungs. The lungs are perfused by two circulations. The first circulation is the pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary arteries deliver systemic venous blood from the heart to the lungs for oxygenation. They branch profusely to feed the pulmonary capillary networks. Pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood from the respiratory zones back to the heart. The pulmonary circulation is a low-pressure, high-volume system. The lung capillary epithelium, or I'm sorry, endothelium, the lung capillary endothelium contains many enzymes that act on different substances to, in the blood. For example, angiotensin-converting enzyme, or ACE, activates a blood pressure hormone. The second circulation is called bronchial circulation. Bronchial arteries provide oxygenated blood to the lung tissue. They arise from the aorta and enter the lungs at the hilum. Bronchial arteries are part of the systemic circulation, so they are high pressure, low volume. They supply all the lung tissue except for the alveoli. Bronchial veins anastomose with, bronchial, um, with pulmonary veins, which carry most of the venous blood back to the heart. The lungs are innervated by parasympathetic and sympathetic motor fibers, as well as a visceral sensory fiber. Nerves enter through the pulmonary plexus on the lung root and run along the bronchial tubes and blood vessels. Parasympathetic fibers cause bronchoconstrictions, whereas sympathetic fibers cause bronchodilation. The pleurae are thin, double-layered serosal membranes that divide the thoracic cavity into two pleural compartments and the mediastinum. 
The parietal pleura is the membrane on the thoracic wall, the superior face of the diaphragm, around the heart and between the lungs. The visceral pleura is the membrane on the external lung surface. The pleural fluid fills the cavity between the visceral and parietal pleura. It provides lubrication and surface tension that assists in the expansion and recoil of the lungs. Pleurisy is the inflammation of the pleura that often results from pneumonia. Inflamed pleura become rough, resulting in friction and stabbing pain with each breath. Pleurae may produce excessive amounts of fluid, which may exert pressure on the lungs, hindering breathing. A pleural effusion is the accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity. Blood can accumulate from a leak in damaged blood vessels. Or blood filtrate, that is a watery fluid, can ooze from the, blood, the lung capillaries when left-sided heart failure occurs.